All right, here we go. We got Chicago legend in the building. Someone who helped to forever change the direction of Chicago hip hop has gone through a lot of trials and tribulations, but is still here putting out music and doing his thing. Little Reese at long last. Welcome to Vlad TV. What's good, man? Shit, we long overdue. Oh, yeah. Very long overdue. But here we are. And, you know, we're about to make history right here. All right. So let's go ahead and get started in the very beginning. So you're born and raised in Chicago. Yeah. Hell yeah. I'm from Chicago. Born and raised. Okay. So you grew up on the south side of Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. I'm from the south side. Calumet building. Okay. And the Calumet Projects is across the street from O Block? Yeah. Yeah. Right across the street. Okay. So, you know, as a kid, what was it like growing up in that area? I don't know. I mean, see, it was tough growing up over there. Because, yeah, like in, o, like in 03, 2003, like the feds had hit and locked everybody up. And we was like 10 years old at the time. So, shit, we was basically on our own. And a lot of stuff had changed. Like, everybody was having money and shit in 03, like around 03, 02, 01. In 2000, like, it was a lot of money, like, drug money and shit flowing. So when the feds had hit, all that stopped and shit, people had to find new ways to get new money and shit. So that's how it was tough growing up. Okay. And that was around the year you started rapping, 2003. Yeah, like, yep, yep. I started rapping around that year, yep. I was, like, 10 years old. That's when I made my first track. Okay, and I guess, what, one of the older dudes just took you to the studio and had yeah. you start recording? Hell yeah, I was rapping with the older niggas. I was 10, one of my homies was 13, and one of them was 18. We was rapping with the older niggas, y'all. So, at 10 years old, you started getting into the studio, and you started rapping. And, uh, I mean, did those first tracks do anything, or, or not really? I mean, shit, no, but it just, like, shit, it just showed me a way. That when the first tracks, like, when I first started rapping, I figured it out. like what I need to do. Okay. And I guess right around that same time, around 2002, 2003, you actually got locked up for the first time. Uh, I think I got locked up, yeah. I probably got locked up for like breaking the window or some shit when I was like, like 11 or some shit, 12 or some shit. I got locked up for breaking the window. Hell yeah, I did. Okay. And you actually got charged for that? Uh, no, I think they had let my mama come get me from the station or something like that. They ain't charged me with it. Cause I was like, I was, I think I was inside like a abandoned building and we was throwing rocks from an from a abandoned building like towards the street and stuff and busting windows, busting people's cars and the police had came and locked us up. But I was like 11 years old at the time. Okay. Well, that happened to you, but how old were you when you really started getting mixed up in the streets? Shit, like 16, 15, when I first lost my homie. Okay. Who was that? Lil Mo. His name ain't Lomo. Okay. We call him and what Lomo. Happened? Well, what happened to him? She had yeah, got killed when we was like 15 or 16 or some shit. He got shot. Okay. Okay. And that was the first person you actually lost that you were close to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my, my main man. Okay. Well, you know, some people, when that happens, they kind of go into a shell and not really come out, but what happened to you when that happened? <laughs> I ain't going to no shell. I ain't gonna lie. Like, shit. When that, when that happened, shit, I don't know. I just, I was, I don't know. I I, I turned to a whole nother person when they killed him. Cause like, he was the person I used to be with 24-7. That was my main man. So like, man, I'm with the, man, I'm graduated. We graduated together. We was from third grade. To all that shit then. Shit, he got killed like when we was in like eighth grade or some shit. But we was together since we was like second and third grade all the way to like eighth grade. So when he got killed, I don't know, it like changed me a little bit. I started looking at a lot of shit different. Yeah. I'm sorry if you're lost, man. A 16-year-old shouldn't have to go through something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Then in, in 2010, I think you were 17, you actually pled guilty to burglary charges. Yeah. Yeah, when I just um, yeah, that was my first. That was the first case I um, 
I caught um, shit. My first case, I ain't never catch no juvenile case or no shit like that. I, so that was my first case. I caught when I turned grown. I just had turned 17. Like, I would have never been charged as an adult. I just turned 17 three days, like, before that happened. And then they charged me as an adult when I was 17 for, like, residential burglary or some goofy shit, like being by somebody's crib. And they called the police type shit. Oh, so it wasn't even like a real burglary. It no, was just someone no. calling the police. Yeah, yeah, it was like somebody calling the police. Like, you know, like you buy somebody's house. And shit, they charged me for a residential burglary by their house. I'm like, damn, I ain't stealing. I ain't even breaking this house. Hmm. Okay, and I guess you got two years probation over that? Uh, Yeah, I got probation off that shit. Now, Chief Keith, you guys knew each other since you were kids. Yeah, yeah, all of us did. In 2011, Chief Keith drops uh, the Glory Road mixtape. And you show up on the last song, Top. At what point do you and Chief Keith really start rapping together? Around that time, we we really, because I wasn't really rapping with him at first, because I was like trying to see that he know what he was doing with the shit. And he knew what he was doing, so I started rapping with him like a little heavy man. He don't got a little tighter. Started being in the studio more and started doing more songs. We did way more songs after we did that first song because I seen he knew what he was doing. Right. And then I think uh, later in the year, he dropped the Bang mixtape. Mm -hmm. Now, at this point, was he making a lot of noise in Chicago or did that come Yeah, he was. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, he was like one of the hottest ones back then. Like, shit, when we all was doing it. Okay. And, and I guess, was it right around this time that you, you, Chief Keefe, and Tato were out in Champaign, Illinois, and a, a situation happened? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you talk? Can you talk about it? Yeah, like shit. We was all out there um, in Champagne. This is a minute ago. Like I think we just had, we just had really started rapping heavy and shit. And they ass was out there and shit. We was just in Champagne and shit. Tato and everybody, we all out there and shit. We kicking it. We had shows. I think we had. This was our first shows. We we started doing. We had some shows in Champagne, like two or three shows. Back to back. So, like, on the third show, when we was leaving and shit, Tato and them was trying to take some weed from a motherfucker. Trying to rob a nigga for some weed and shit. I think the nigga ended up taking a gun from Tato or something, popping Tato in his leg or some goofy shit. But it was some goofy shit that happened. Silly as hell. We was young, though, but we ain't know what we was really doing. Oh, Okay. Right around that year, I kind of feel like Chicago started to change. Mm -hmm. uh, Tuca, Tuca ended up getting killed at 15 years old. And then, allegedly, as a retaliation, Odie Perry got killed at 20 years old. And Oblock is actually named after Odie Perry. Did you know Odie at all? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, I grew up together. Okay. Went the same. When you heard the news, uh, I'm sorry. What was that? I said we went to the same grammar school to get him in Odie. Okay. How big of a figure was Odie Perry during that time? Uh, everybody looked up to him. Yeah, he was. Yeah, like he was one of them. One of the ones from back then. Beating motherfuckers yeah, up. Yeah. Everybody was scared of Odie. Right. Um... After he passed away, like I said before, Oblock, you know, he had so much, you know, respect in that neighborhood that Oblock actually got named after him. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when he got killed, was that just like a huge loss all around? Yeah, it was. Because he was like one of, the, one of our first ones that we lost. Like, we weren't losing friends at the time or losing close ones at the time. So when we lost him, everybody felt it. Yeah. Sorry for your loss, man. That was just kind of, a, seemed like a sad time in Chicago during that time. Yeah, yeah, it was. Okay, so that happens. And then in 2012, Chief Keefe drops, I don't like featuring you. Mm -hmm. When you guys first put that song together, did you feel like you had something special on your hands or was it just a bunch of songs you guys were just whipping out one after another? No, I, I knew it was something special because it, 
you know, you could feel it. I ain't gonna lie, you could feel that shit when it's something special and when it's different. You could feel it. And she, I felt it. I told them, like, shit, let's shoot the video. Soon we did the song, I'm like, let's shoot the video. This shit finna blow up. And shit, that's what we did. Right. And that video was shot, what, like in someone's apartment? Um, yeah, it was in an apartment. Mm hmm. Okay, Fredo Santana's in the video. Mm hmm. Um, and I guess as soon as that song dropped, it just started going crazy right away. Yeah, hell yeah. And it took off right then and now. Okay. And I kind of feel like that song really changed Chicago hip hop forever because it's not like there haven't been rappers in Chicago. I mean, Twister's been around, you know, Common's around, Kanye was obviously around, but like what you guys did in that one song, I think made everyone go like, yo, what, what is this? Like, this sounds like the next shit right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, I ain't gonna lie. It was, for real. Yeah, and I feel like when that song dropped, Chicago hip hop just got changed forever to this day. Like, yeah. you, everyone's still riding off the wave of that song. Is how I feel. <laughs> I mean, I mean, how did it feel to be part of a song that big? Like, even to this day, like, when that song comes on, like, Pandemonium. I don't know. I don't know. It just feel, I don't know. It feel normal. But I know it changed a lot of shit. So I'm just, shit, I'm grateful to be known that bitch. Yeah. Yeah, man. Great song. Great song. And then, uh. I think when Love Sosa came out, I think that's when Drake actually even said that was his favorite song. That he was listening to it like a million times. And it, it just seemed like the momentum at that point for everyone just started taking off like crazy. Mm -hmm. It really was. I ain't gonna lie. And, well, not too long after that, Kanye ended up actually jumping on I Don't Like and he did the remix featuring Chief Keef, Pusha T, Big Sean, and Jadakiss. But for some reason, he didn't actually have you on the song. I don't know. I think he did that because he was trying to put his artist on some Chicago shit, which he should have never did. But I think that's what he was trying to do because all know was like good music or something at the time. All know was signed to good music and that was his, rap, his record label at the time. So I guess that's why he did that. He put the whole good music on our song. And took me off and left so soon. I mean, did you feel some type of way when that came out like that, considering how big Kanye was? I don't know. I mean, I felt like he should have left me on that bitch, but I wasn't really tripping because I had ended up doing something with Ross and Drake at the time. So I, I, I really was like, this my get back for that song, for him taking me off that song. I made my own hit. Right. And you're talking about us. Yeah, yeah. Right? Mm hmm. And I, I guess, did you record the song Us like two days after Don't Like? Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I recorded that at my crib. Yeah. After, after we did Don't Like, I was like, just like, let me do something else. Because I know this, this one song finna go, so I'm just do another song and see if this one gonna go too. And it went. Right. And I'm gonna say that Us is my favorite song that you've ever done. Like, I've listened to that song more than any other song you've ever done over and over again. It's just such a dope concept, like the beat, you know, the way it came together, the chorus, it, it was just a perfect song. For sure, bro. And uh, the chorus from that song is actually taken from a Kanye line on the Rihanna Diamonds remix. Oh, uh, when he said that? I think that's why he owned it. Yeah, know. you know what I'm talking about. I mean, yeah. He, he, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, is he, I mean, he actually says at the top, it's just us, but I don't really trust. Like, it's actually, like, because I remember, like, listening to that song, I'm like, oh, shit, that's the same chorus as, as Reese's song. Yeah, yeah. Like, around so. that time, I don't know, it was like a lot of people saying, saying that bar or saying that phrase and putting it in their song. Okay. Makes sense. Okay, and then you actually ended up doing the remix for us with Rick Ross and Drake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that song actually showed up on Rick Ross's mixtape, uh, Black Bar Mitzvah. How come that showed up on Ross's project and not yours? I don't know. At the time, look, that's crazy. At the time, I don't know, I wasn't thinking. Like, I ain't, I ain't had no business, man, said, like, because I just was fresh out the streets and started rapping. So when he put it on his shit, I was like, oh, I'll let him put it on his shit because it might blow up even more. So that's why I let him put it on his shit. 
I mean, yeah, I mean, you got Drake on your song. I mean, <laughs> you know, this dude makes careers just off doing a guest verse. Uh, and you and Drake actually met, I, was it before or after that song? Uh, I think we had met after the song, but but we was talking the shit, like, in the midst of all that shit when it was going on. We was talking, then we had met in Atlanta. Okay, and then, then you ended up doing the Traffic remix featuring Young Jeezy and Twister. Yeah, mm-hmm. With, with Twist and um, Jeezy, I put on the remix of um, that Traffic shit. Right, another big song. So now you have two big solo songs under your, under your belt. And you got Don't Like. So right now you're actually on fire. Um, and you ended up signing to Def Jam, I think, before Chief Keef even signed, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to Interscope. Me and Dirk got signed to Def Jam before Sosa got signed. We the one made him wanted to get signed because he seen us signed. And he was like, man, fuck that. I'm finna go get signed now. And he went to go get signed by Interscope. Okay. And, you know, I'm not going to get in your pockets, but that deal with Def Jam, was it like a big deal? Or was it like, all right, here's enough money for me to like focus on my music, but I still got to keep grinding? It wasn't, no, it, wasn't no, it wasn't no big deal at the time. I ain't going to lie. It was like a million dollars all together for me and Dirk, but it wasn't no big deal. But shit, it was something that helped us get up off our feet. Yeah. Okay. Right around that time, there was a video that came out with you and a female. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, as a kid, I, I understand, man. 16, 17, 18 years old, you do a lot of stupid shit that you regret later on. You know, when you look at that video, when you got into it uh, with that one girl, you know, you, you later on apologized. Yeah. When you look back on that incident now, how do you feel? I don't know. Like, I wish I could take it back. I would have never did it. I would have never. And yeah. I was like, I think, um, yeah, that was... I would never did that shit though. I would never did that if, if I could look back on that right now. Cause now, now, like I got all daughters, so I guess that's what happened. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I said, man, as a kid, you do a lot of stupid shit, and I don't yeah. feel that like your worst moment should define you as a person. And the fact that you're apologizing now and you feel bad about it, I think that says a lot, as opposed to just kind of you know some people just say whatever but you know like i said you have daughters now and you did apologize for the situation i think that's big of you did you ever did you ever talk to her and, and personally yeah, you yeah, know I did. work it out with her afterwards yeah, yeah I, I ended up meeting her daddy at at, at the mosque I, I met her daddy like he walked up on me i didn't even know who he was he was like man that was my daughter that was my daughter he was fighting mm -hmm. i'm like damn he walked up on me but i had like two three of my homies with me so I was like, shit, whatever he was going to do, we was going to have to do it. But he had, her daddy walked up on me. I didn't even know who he was. And he was like, man, that was my daughter. He was fighting. Ooh, ooh. Then me and him started chopping it up. And he was like, man, I forgive you. I forgive you for that. Ooh, y'all was kids. Ooh. So that just made me. Yeah. Shit, man up on that even more. That's good, man. Yeah, that's good. I'm sure you do the same thing. Something happened like that to your daughter. Yeah, yeah. Go crazy. You know what I'm saying? Right. Okay. Now, you guys, you guys are blowing up. Big song after big song after big song. But, you know, with the love comes the hate as well. And one of the people that didn't like you was, was little JoJo. He dropped BDK, you know, which is short for Black Disciple Killer. And that was the first time I feel like something like that actually got put on a record. Um, when that song came out, were you bothered by it or was it just like you're no, popping right now, whatever? No, I wasn't bothered by it. I really ain't even care at the time. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't care. I wasn't even thinking about him. Yeah. And then, not too long after dropping that song, he ends up getting killed. Um, I remember Chief Keefe, he tweeted, uh, it's sad. Cause Jojo wanted to be like us, just like us, LMAO, laughing my ass off. He later on said it, it was hacked. You know, his uh, Twitter was hacked, but you know, I mean, you guys were going at it. It is what it is. Um, but people do, you know, it feels like around that time is when people started putting, just becoming more aggressive in the music. Like, you know what I mean? Like I'm sure BDK was a term and everything, but no one actually put it on a song 
and really made themselves a target to all the black disciples out there. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like when, when that came out, do you feel like Chicago hip hop changed? Yeah, yeah, it did. Cause then people start thinking like, shit, this, 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 this sad is now. So shit, that's the way people start going about things. Start doing, start trying to be gangster on the track and doing gangster shit. I mean, at that time, the whole BDGD thing, was it really flaring up or was it just certain people were into each other? That's how into it, it was. It really was certain people into it with each other. That one, no, like, whole Chicago thing, the BDs versus the GDs. It was certain sets and certain hoods against certain hoods. That was BDs and that was GDs, and that's how it was. Yeah. Yeah, I remember I interviewed Don Dirk, um, you know, who was, you know, one of the early guys in that, you know, in that whole thing. And I remember he started to cry when I talked about the BD-GD war because he was like, yo, originally the BDs and GDs were all together, and they were all, like, one. You know... People keep saying that we split it. We never split it. Hoover was, wait a minute. Yeah, I'm a, Look, Hoover um, was the king of the gangster nation. Um, and, um, King Dave was the king of the disciple nation. It was never no split. Um, even though Hoover them had the same laws and teachings as we had during that time. Because they had to accept that, um, becoming a part of us. The um the heart, the horn, the devil tail, and the pig box. And um whatever sand and things that we had going to, um uh, colors, you know, and things like that. Um I don't know why people keep saying it was a split. It was never no split. And then later on he felt like rap music is what started to get people beefing with each other and, and you know what I mean, doing all that type of shit. But, you know, he, he felt like it was all one thing. Like, you know, he, he had a lot of respect for all the original OGs, like the David Barksdales and, and everyone's like that. Um, you know, I mean, when you, when you saw that start to play out, and I feel like the music started to escalate. It. Yeah, it did. It did escalate. You know? That shit did make the music yeah. escalate, yeah, because it was different. Right. And social media as well. Mm-hmm. Because social media wasn't that big back then. And then suddenly you got the fans chiming in and, and everything else like that. And, and it's still going to this day. Mm hmm Hell yeah. So, so Chief Keef drops uh, Finally Rich. That shit goes crazy. And it kind of solidifies him, you know, as one of the biggest rappers out there. Um, he signs, you know, he had already signed to Interscope. Uh, you ended up putting out the, the Don't Like uh, mixtape hosted by DJ Drama. And that was like your first your first actual mixtape? Yeah, yeah. That was my first mixtape ever. I put it out with DJ Drama and DJ Kenny. Against the Grill. Right. Chief Keef was on it. Dirk was on it. Fredo was on it. Freddie Gibbs was on it. Hell Rell was on it. So you had a nice kind of mix of Chicago rappers and out-of-town rappers as well. Mm -hmm. um, were you already on Def Jam when that dropped? Um, no, I had... I, I ain't gonna lie, I got signed off Def Jam off... Yeah, matter of fact, I think I was saying, because when I put the mixtape out, I was saying, when I didn't, I did, I got sad of one song, like two songs I ever had out. I ain't even had no music out. I got sad of two songs. I ain't had no music out at the time. So by that yeah, time, when I really? dropped, that, dropped the album, I mean, I dropped that um, Don't Like mixtape, I had to been saying. Okay, so you drop your first mixtape, and then in 2013, you drop your second mixtape, Super Savage. Chief Keef's on it, Dirk's on it again, Fredo's on it again, Wale and Waka Flocka's on it. The Super Savage mixtape, was that kind of the first mixtape that really kind of blew up for you? Or was the first one uh, the uh, first one big as well? No, I think I, I could say like 
like my second, because when I did my Gangsta Grills mixtape with Drummer and Kenny, that's the one that really did it. My first mixtape ever. Yeah. Okay. But now you got two mixtapes out and, and you're you're building up. Now, now in 2013, I feel like something changed in, in Chicago hip hop again. And, and I actually, I did some research on this and, and I might be wrong, but I feel like that year is when people start talking about, well, Chicago rappers start talking about smoking on their ops in music. And I, I went on Twitter and, and asked, asked everyone to help me out to see what was the first song that mentioned that. It seemed like it's Rondo number nine, Hang With Me. Where he's talking about smoking on Tuca on that song. No. Was that the first song? I don't know. I don't think it was. I think, um, I think Sosa probably was saying that shit. Like. Well, I mean, I looked it up. So Chief Keef had a song called Earned It in 2014, where he said, I took a Tuca blunt and I burned it. But I don't know if he actually mentioned smoking on anyone before that. Oh, yeah. So if you, you say mean, Rondo, I mean, clearly Chief Keef was. Matter of fact, Rondo probably. That, he, that's Rondo, the earliest song. Rondo, what song, what year was it when Rondo dropped that song? It was in 2013, a song called Hang With Me. Yeah, he, he said, I'm have. smoking on the Tuca Pack. Yeah, I'm high as shit. I got that fucking 50 in the Mac. I will wet you quick. That That's the first time I, I found it. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. That's about it. I, I, nah, nah. You, yeah. you, 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 it's making sense to my head. That's about it. Okay, and I feel like after that happened, everyone started doing it to the point where even like to this day, dudes in Jacksonville and, and LA and, and all these other areas are talking about smoking on their enemies and it's just become a thing. Mm -hmm. But I feel like it started that year. Yeah. Um, if you, You've done that in some of your songs as well. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, when you look at that whole phenomenon of people talking about smoking on their enemies, at the end of the day, I mean, listen, it's just words. You know what I mean? It's not like you're actually doing anything. You're just talking shit. But on the other end, you know, there's people who love that person, family members, friends who are going to take something like that personally because it's so disrespectful. I mean, what do you think about that whole thing now as you're older and you got kids and everything? I don't know. I mean, shit, it's rap. That's what people say, and that's what that's what that's what's going on. That's what's happening now. People be smoking on motherfuckers. They be seeing. That's how I just look at the shit. Okay, I mean, because people talked about smoking on some of your dead friends, also. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So everybody do it. So it's like, it's like it's not like we just doing it, and people not doing it to us. People probably just said it to us first, and that's why we saying it back. Okay, so then that next year, 2014, you actually had your first daughter. Yeah. I mean, having a kid usually is a life-changing experience. Having a daughter is an even more life-changing experience for a man. When that happened, did you feel like, all right, I got to move different and really change my life? Or was yeah. it like, Hell yeah, yeah. Having really? my daughter made me move different and change my life. Because, shit, if I ain't had my daughter, I probably would have still been doing a lot of dumb shit and still been in the streets heavy like how I was. So that's, yeah. I know having my daughter changed a lot of shit. And I was young, too, at the time, so, hell yeah, it changed. It changed a lot of shit. Right, because you were how old at the time? Um, 21? Like, like. Yeah. Probably like 20. Yeah, 2021, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 2021. Well, and I think that same... Yeah. And I think that same year, you actually ended up getting arrested on a gun charge and you claimed that the Chicago police actually planted the gun on you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they they did plant the gun on me because the gun went under my seat. It was like five of us in the car, but they knew who I was. So by that time, they was like, shit, you going to burn out? This your gun. This your gun, right? So that's how I got locked up. I think, was, was it around that time? You know, you're still signed to Def Jam. And I mm -hmm. guess there was some sort of situation, you mentioned on academics, in the studio where things went crazy and something got broken and guns got pulled out and some yeah. other shit. Hell yeah, yeah, like downtown. In the studio, I had just signed to Def Jam. Like, shit, they booked the session. And it was like 
some girls was in our studio session. We young, you know, we got a group full of girls in there. So some more group full of girls coming out. Now they get to fighting. Damn, that bitch fighting. That shit led to all type of shit. Like, they bust a big window on the studio. Like, you know, CR, I think, matter of fact, was this CRC? No, I don't think this was CRC, folks, but it's like, that shit was downtown. I think it was CRC, if I'm not mistaken. They bust a big glass on the front window, like $50,000 glass we had to pay for. They was crashing to all the cars that was in front of the um, studio. Like, it was a mess. It was a lot going on. Wait, 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 wait. They, they crashed into the cars yeah, as well? Yeah, like, the girl, like, she got jumped on. So when she was, like, trying to get back in, she was trying to run people over as outside the studio. What was outside the studio. Wow. Okay. And after all the dust settled, you got left with the bill. Man, yup. Hell yeah, I had to pay that shit. Okay. And was that, like, after that, you ended up leaving Def Jam? Yeah, hell yeah, I had to leave Def Jam because they made me pay for it. Yeah. Okay. And then that next year, you dropped the Super Vultures EP with Lil Durk. Yeah. Were you independent at that point or yeah, were you still yeah. on Def Jam? Yeah, I was independent. I was independent at that time. Yep, I've been independent ever okay. since. Okay. And that was a... Okay, that was a hell of a project, by the way. Keep My Distance is, is one of my favorite songs by you. Mm -hmm. that's, that's my joint right there. Okay, so now you're independent. And you actually said that you actually made more money independently in one year than you made with your million-dollar signing bonus when you signed a Dev Jam. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I mean, how did it feel to, to be independent at that point? I don't know. It felt good, actually, because it was like the label, I wasn't waiting on them no more. I ain't have to wait on no label. I ain't have to wake up and be like, what the label on? Is they going to get behind this? Is they going to do this? Is they going to do that? Instead of just going. When I knew I was independent, I knew I, ain't have to, I couldn't depend on no label. I had to just go and just make it happen myself. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think in general, I mean, it, it's cool to sign to a major and get your name up and get radio play and, and get that machine. But at one point, once you figure out the game, yeah, you can make way more money. You know, all the stream money. I mean, because what, what I understand, when you sign to a major label, they pretty much keep most of the stream money. You Hell get the yeah. show money. Yeah, <laughs> you, you know don't, what I'm saying? You don't, you don't, you don't see they, none of that money. They're, they're going to recoup. Yeah, you don't see none of that money that's, you don't see none of that money that's getting sold on the internet. You don't get none of the streaming money because they got to recoup their money back that they spent on you. So why, yep. so why, exactly. so why, exactly. so why do some sign and stuff when you could be independent and you could get all the screaming money yourself? Exactly. 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 Now, now that next year, 2018, um, Takashi was, was running around and wild and everything else like that. The part I didn't realize until actually doing research about you is that before Takashi started dissing you and everyone else, you guys were actually FaceTiming. And talking about doing a song, and y'all were actually cool. And then yeah. out of nowhere, suddenly he started dissing you and O Block and, and and Dirk and everyone else. Yeah, his manager. Well, why shoddy. do you think that happened? I don't know. that y'all were cool before. I don't know. His manager Shotty used to be calling me and stuff. Like, yeah, Reese, I want you to fuck with um this young nigga. My young nigga, man, he hot. Woo. So when he put dude in the phone, it was him. It was Takashi sitting there. I'm like, I'm like, all right, bet. I'm like, okay, cool. We never did nothing. Next thing I know, the nigga was on the internet woofing. I'm like, boo, you was just on the phone calling me trying to do a song. Telling me you look up to Rondo number nine and all type of shit. Hmm. Don't you hate that shit? Like, that's happened to me so many times. I'd be cool with someone. We work everything out on the phone. Then the next day, they go on the internet and just do do the most. Like, like we never yeah. talked. Yeah, it's ass. Yeah, yeah. He did that type of shit. He did that. Like, But that's how I knew something was, something was wrong with him. Something was to him. I'm like, something to this nigga. Yeah, goofy. Right. Uh, when he showed up to O Block and, and filmed that little video for 30 seconds and jumped back in his car, what'd you think? I knew he went there for long. I mean, I already had got the word from the securities and stuff who was, because they called me and told me what he did, actually, and they sent me the video. So I already knew, like, he went out there, he went out there like that, because the people already hit me and sent me the video. The securities who was working, they, they know us. Like, we grew up together. So... 
of course they're gonna tell us everything. Well, I guess you had mentioned this in another interview that you were actually at the airport when he arrived and actually saw him get in his car and everything. Uh -huh. Yeah, me and my little cousin. Oh, okay, so what are you doing? Here you are, a successful rapper. <laughs> You're sitting in front of an airport waiting for this dude to touch down. I mean, at one point, did you think like, okay, what am, what am I really doing here? Oh, no. I was on some hot shit. I don't know. I just was on some hot shit at the time. I was on some hot shit. I know I was. Okay. I was on some hot shit because I was, I was tired as hell because like somebody had hit me and said, this is how I knew he was at the airport and I knew when he was coming to Chicago. Somebody, somebody was on the plane with him. And they DM me, because you know all this was going on. Somebody, a yeah. fan was on the plane with him and DM me and sent me the picture of Takashi being on the plane. And was like, we getting off, we getting off this time. Wow. And we shot up to the airport. Okay. I mean, but you do realize, right? I mean, you're an adult at this time. Yeah. If there's any place you're not gonna get away with some shit, it's an airport. <laughs> they got so many cameras oh, in no, every thinking, place in that airport thinking, that no. I was thinking like, man, let's just follow him or something. Ooh, ooh, but I was like, man, no, let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> okay, I'm glad nothing happened. Yeah, yeah, me too. I mean, when ultimately, yeah, I mean, when ultimately he ended up getting arrested, he took the stand, and he basically helped to give people about 100 years. I mean, based on his testimony, over 100 years of time has been handed out to Shadi, all those dudes. Yeah, big snitch. Did that surprise you that he, he did what he did? No, it didn't surprise me. I knew he wasn't like that. Like, you could tell when people ain't like that and when it's forced, when you being forced to be something. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, ultimately he gets out because he ended up telling on everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess he told because they was uh, fucking his girl. Takashi caught. <laughs> yep. I mean, allegedly. I don't I don't know about that. I mean, like, <laughs> if Takashi reached out to you right now and asked to do a song with you, what would you say? I never do it. Never do no song with him. Never ever put my face on the side of his face. Uh, there you go. He burnt, he burnt. Okay. I ain't putting my face with his face. Yeah. Well, uh, we had talked about this before. You and Fredo were actually friends since you guys were little kids. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, you know, Fredo ends up moving out to L.A. And it seemed like the drug use continued and got heavier. You know, the drinking of the lean. And he talked about this interview. He was saying that he faced so much trauma and lost so many of his friends that he had problems dealing with it, which is why he would get high and everything else like that. But then he ended up having liver failure. He ended up in the hospital. He was talking about going to rehab. But then in 2018, he ended up passing away. Were, were you in contact with him up until the point that he died? Yeah, hell yeah. Man, I was talking like two, three days before he died. But he was telling me like, he was just, um, he just had a seizure. And, and um, I think he told me like Gino or somebody came in and found him in the room. He was like, he could have been dead. Telling me like, I could have been dead, bro. And I was like, damn. You tweak, I'm finna come out there. And like three days later, he died the same way. I mean, being as close as you guys were, and, and you you knew about the drug issues. I mean, he, yeah, it I, was, yeah, you know, I, everyone I had, knew about it. It I wasn't had, a secret. I, I used to be doing the shit, but I had stopped because I was like, I don't know where it stopped. I, I used to be drinking lean and all that shit heavy around the town with bro and all that shit. I used to stay getting up with him, getting, getting off the lane. But I don't know, something just told me, like, slow down on that shit. And I just stopped the lingering and stopped doing all that shit. They still was doing it. Yeah. I think it was sad, man, because he had a baby on the way, I think, yeah. at the time. Uh -huh. Yeah, he did. It, it seemed like, even though Fredo was always down with you guys, mm -hmm. it seemed like after he passed, even guys who who were your enemies and so forth, everyone showed this dude respect. I ain't gonna lie. Like, like no one, no one dissed him after he died. That's how it was with him, bro. He was a stand-up nigga. Like, he want, he want yeah. all on the internet saying, I'm smoking this up, I'm doing all, he wasn't doing that. Cause he was always older than all of us. So, just imagine he older than all of us. He, wait, he like 30. He was like, say for instance, me and Sosa, I'm, I'm 19, Sosa 16, 15, 16, 17. At the time, Fredo was like 21, 22. He was older than all of us. So he was the oldest one out of us. 
So that's why he carried himself yeah, a little I mean, different. Yeah, he was 27 years old. Yeah, he carried himself a little different. Yeah, he was 27 when he died. Yeah, he carried himself real, real different, yeah, man. Yeah, it's sad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, I never got a chance to meet him, but I've always I've always liked his music. I, I always I always respected, like, his, it's so crazy. his energy. Hey, like look, I said, the, the way right, he carried so crazy. himself. Because, nigga, like... He he was he 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 had ties with Fruits of Drake all them back then. Like he was fucking with them back then, and they knew who he was back then. Yeah. Yeah, man. I'm sorry if you're lost. Like I said, I never got a chance to meet him, but mm-hmm. you guys were obviously real close. So I'm sorry yeah. that happened to you. For sure. Well, uh, that same year in 2018, the feds end up raiding your house. Yeah. And, and one of the dudes who actually was part of the raid was a former member of the Chicago Bears, yeah. Charles, Charles Tillman, Tillman. Yeah, who ended up becoming an FBI agent. Yep. That, I think he just Did had, you recognize him? You're like, yo. Yeah, hell yeah. When he when they ran in my crib, <laughs> me and my homies know him, like they had put all us in the kitchen. So I'm telling my homie, I'm tapping my homie. I'm like, man, ain't this the football player? And then I tell him like, what's up? Ain't you Charles Tillman? He was like, what's up? Why? Why? I'm like, what you mean? Why? You look like dude. He like, don't worry about it. And I told my homie, like, man, this, this him, this dude, this that, this that nigga who used to play for the Bears. He a football, he a federal agent. He a federal agent there. Hell yeah, yeah. Police. <laughs> okay. And I guess they ended up taking a hundred thousand yeah. during that raid. Oh uh, yeah. That you yeah. never got back. Yeah, they took, yeah, they took a hundred thousand out of my career. Like a hundred thousand. If it went a hundred thousand, it was like down in 90 something. Okay, and after taking that money, I guess they didn't even file any charges. <laughs> exactly, that's what I'm. Yeah, they they got what they want. Yeah, <laughs> I ain't even get charged with shit. That's crazy. I ain't and get I guess, the money back well, I money. guess since you didn't get charged, you didn't try to get your money back. So pretty exactly. much, you ended up walking was, away from it. Hell yeah, that's how it was. Shit, it was a win-win situation. <laughs> Make another one or something. Well, I'll tell you, man. I, I, I'll tell you, like, if you know the BMF story, yeah, the way things got unraveled in that whole story was Southwest T got caught with like $4 million worth of jewelry and he tried to get it back. And 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 trying to get that jewelry back, that unraveled everything. Wow. Because, you know, Jacob the jeweler got, got got ended up getting caught up in that case because he wasn't doing the proper forms for the purchases. And then like so you Kim say- Kardashian's first husband... Yeah, like everything, that's when the feds started to really unroll the whole story and started indicting everyone because he tried to get that that jewelry back. Wow. So, you know, if that if that makes you feel any better, not trying, you know, taking that loss, at least you're out of jail. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh no, I just played it like the streets anyway. I'm like, shit. I'm like, shit, okay, I ain't finna f- fight, 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 fight no case against the feds. Yeah. Put them on me even more. Hell no. There you have it. Well, then, that next year, 2019, you were driving and you were at an intersection and then suddenly your car gets shot up. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess there was 12 shots? She had 26. 26 shots. Mm-hmm. 26, like 26, 28. Now, was, was that the first time you got shot at? Hell no, I got, hell no. My first time getting shot at was at my crib. Like, I was standing on the op shit on 51st. I was standing on the op shit um, down on the low end. I was coming out the crib, me and my mans, and one more of my other mans. And, like, I think they was waiting in the gangway. And they shot, like, 30 times. But they missed us. And then they was, like, chasing us in the back. We was running through the alley, like, from outside the crib. That was my first time getting shot at. Okay. But that this is the first, first time, time you actually shot. got hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the first time you got hit. Hell yeah. And you actually got hit in the neck. Yeah, I got hit in the neck. Okay, well, how many times did you get hit total? I got shot one time. One bullet came from my neck to my back. Came out okay, my so, back. Okay, so out of all those 20-something shots, only one shot actually hit you. Yeah, hell yeah. Okay. Were you the only one in the car or there were multiple people in the car? Yeah, I was the only one at the car. I was the only one at the car at the time. Okay. So so here you are, minding your business, 
and your whole car is getting shot up, you get shot in the neck. How do you drive yourself to the hospital? No, I, I actually got out the car and put my um my um hoodie over my neck because I had people was looking at my neck. I knew something was wrong. So I put my hoodie over my neck and there was a car behind me. I tried to open a door and get in it and go to the hospital, tell them to take me to the hospital, but I couldn't talk. My voice was graspy at the time. I guess because I was hitting the neck. I was like, take me to the hospital. Take me to the hospital. I couldn't even talk. I couldn't even, I ain't had no, no voice or nothing. So I'm snatching on people's doors. They pulling off on me. So I went to the fourth car. The fourth car that was behind me, it was like four cars behind me. The fourth car, dude, like, man, come on, get in. I'll take you. Took me to the hospital, shit. I went to the hospital. I was walking in the hospital, shit. I was walking in that bitch. I walked in, like, I'm walking in the hospital with my thing on my neck, just walking in the hospital. See, they like sit right here, sit right here. A lady came, shot me in my arm with something, and I, I went through surgery and I made it. Okay. She like, I mean, when you finally, when you finally come out of surgery, mm -hmm. and, and here you are, where your whole career is based on your voice, and you just got shot in the neck. I mean, did you start to panic like, yo, like my whole rap career about to be over because? I just got shot in the throat. I don't know. A lot of shit was going through my head. I ain't gonna lie. Like, I was happy I made it. I was happy I made it. I ain't gonna yeah. lie. I got shot in the neck with a. Yeah, I, I got mean, shot in the neck with a with a fucking AK. So like, a fucking Draco. I got shot in the neck with a seven point two. So niggas ain't surviving off that type of shit. So when I, I was just happy I yeah. survived off that. Like, shit, that's what it is. Right, it almost reminds me, do you know the story about the DOC who was down with NWA? No, but I always be hearing about that stuff. Yeah, the DOC was uh, had just dropped an album. You know, he was down with NWA. He had just dropped an album that went gold. He was like considered a hot, one of the hot rappers out. And he was just, he was always drunk at the time. He was, you know, he was just yeah. an alcoholic and he ended up getting just blackout drunk. And ended up falling asleep behind the wheel, crashing into a tree, and his whole throat got tore up, and he never recovered That's from it. Like to this, yeah, to this day, yeah, yeah, you can watch the whole interview I, I did with him. Yeah, like so his whole voice, voice sounds, is like super, my voice super, super actually raspy. better than his, and I got shot in the neck. You got lucky, you got lucky because his voice never recovered, and he actually tried to get an extra surgery to try to clear it up, and it actually made. That's it worse. what probably did it. Yeah, I ain't do it's, all it's, it's that. A, I ain't do none of that. Like they was trying to make me do all type yeah. of shit to fix my voice but i said i'm gonna let my shit naturally heal and see how i take it and see what happened and not taking no pills not doing none of that shit not doing no surgery i ain't get nothing on my neck i ain't do nothing i let it heal on its own and that's that's probably probably got a little a little stronger yeah i mean you got lucky because like i said like with him he wanted to go back on tour right away and he found a doctor that would just operate on his neck, even though other doctors were telling him not to do it. And he ended up tearing up his neck even worse. That's what I'm and listen, saying. he went on. I mean, he wrote, you know, like he wrote most of Dre's The Chronic in, you know, 2001. And he had a lot of writing credits, but he couldn't really rap anymore oh, yeah. because, yeah, his, his throat got tore up. Well, okay. Now, from what you said, that whole shooting wasn't even meant for you, that you feel like it was mistaken identity. No, it was. The whole city know that. Okay. From what I understand, though, that they actually announced, the police announced they had a person of interest in the shooting and they actually found the car that, that shot at you. Did they ever arrest the dude who, who shot you? No, they asked me, did I want to go to court? And then they, I said, no, I, don't, I ain't going to court on none of that. Okay, so because you didn't press any charges, they pretty much just dropped the investigation? Yeah, I guess. That's what they're going to have to do. Okay. Without without saying any names, do you personally know who did it? No, I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. I don't okay. know. Okay. Do you feel angry? Do you feel angry over the situation still? No, I ain't angry. No, I ain't angry. Really? I think I'd be angry. <laughs> you know, I'm sitting there minding my own business. Someone just shoots up my car. I think I'd be I'd be pretty angry. You say you would be pissed. Fuck you that. Know, me, me, I I I I'd be beyond angry, but you know, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you can't live your whole life being angry, you know. So I, I salute you for your maturity. For sure. O okay. Well, uh, you get through that, 
And then that next year, I feel like a whole bunch more tragedy starts to occur. <laughs> I got jumped. Uh, what? Niggas are talking about. Well, you got, you got jumped. Okay. And, and let me just clear it out there that the underwear you were wearing and they actually showed the real underwear. Yeah. It was a multicolored set of underwear. People try yeah. to say that you went to the bathroom on yourself, but yeah. they actually showed the real underwear. And th that was yeah. all. That was all cap. Yeah. So let, let's just clear up that rumor. On, I mean, shit. It was some ops who jumped me. So of course they was gonna be saying all type of shit, trying to make it seem like some that it won. Yeah. Whatever happened to the dudes that jumped you? Shit. They know. Oh, they know. There you have it. There you have it. Um, well, th that same year, there was a lot of tragedy, though. Uh -huh. um, FBG Duck ends up getting killed earlier that year. And, you know, he had been going back and forth with you guys over the years. Um, for a while, you know, there wasn't any news about it. But then recently, five people got charged you know, for that situation. See thing, move up. You know, the other dudes, you know, and I don't want you to speak about the situation because it's an open case right now. But, you know, see thing, move up. Those are people that you actually know. Yeah, I grew up with them. Yeah. You know, how are they holding up right now? They should be cool. They should, I know they holding their head up. I know they strong. They ain't no weak man of people. I know they, they cool. Well, that happens, and then a couple months later, King Vaughn gets killed in Atlanta. Now, you and Vaughn were really close growing up together. Yeah. When you heard that news that night, and then you saw that video, what went through your head? Man, my girl woke me up and told me, like, your homie just got killed. I was like, what you mean? Who? She was like, Vaughn. And then... I got on the internet and I seen everything. I was like, shit, I was just like, damn. I was fucked up off the shit. It really seemed like at the time, Vaughn was really on his way. You know, it seemed like he was like the hottest, like young gangster rapper, like in the game. It seemed like everyone was checking for him and he was about to really just blow the fuck up. Yeah, he was. And then, and then that happened. Yeah, he was. You know, and well, I mean, aside from 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 Vaughn, like people, you know, don't mention that other people got killed as well. I think was Slutty got killed. Yeah. Was that a friend of yours as well? Yeah, yeah. Slutty was my people. Yeah, Slutty was like an older. He was like an older person around us who we who we fucked with. He was my homie, T Roy, big brother. T Roy had passed. Yeah. I mean, when you look at that situation, you know, like I remember I interviewed uh, Track, who was his manager at the time, who got shot as well. And we just talked about how similar it was to like, you know, Tupac dying, where you had a situation between two people that don't like each other, a fist fight occurs that turns into a shooting. But at the end of the day, the whole thing could have been avoided and was, was kind of unnecessary. A lot of people compare the situation to how Tupac died. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a guy that ran up on someone who he had an issue with, start punching him, and shortly afterwards, he ends up getting killed. So, I mean, do you think that's a fair comparison or no? Bro, it's past fair. It's 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 kind of crazy, right? Like yeah. it's the same scenario. Um, and Vaughn is like the same type of artist, same type of guy. Like it's just it's just saying God must have had a plan. And the plan got to be probably bigger than we all know it is because it's crazy how that scenario kind of fit with him. Like when you look at that, how do you feel? Shit. This the screech, Vad. Yeah. It's sad, man. He had kids and he had kids on the way. You know, who are never gonna get to meet him. Um, you know, and, and it, it like when you look at that whole situation, it seemed like it was about a whole lot of nothing. 
You know what I mean? I think it was over a girl, like it was over NBA young boy's baby mother, them hanging out together and, and him and Quando Rondo started going back and forth. But at the end of the day, it's not like anything really serious really happened between, between those dudes to have it escalate to the point of multiple murders. You see what I'm saying? You know, you're older now. You got kids as well. Like when you look at that, th does it make you kind of sad the way it kind of just played out? Oh no, I ain't looking at it like it's sad. Hey, oh no. No? No. How how do you view it? Man. Um, I don't even know how to answer that. Cause them are my people I lost. So I don't know how to answer that. Right, because you and Quando Rondo, I think, went back and forth for a little while after that. Yeah, I don't fuck with him. Yeah, I mean, I've interviewed it before. Um, I, I don't know, man. It, it just seemed like a lot of a lot of death over what really looks like just a bunch of rap beef. It don't it don't seem like it's some shit that even is all that serious. It just seems like a bunch of rappers just trying to really just kind of compete with each other. But it's not like I mean, I mean, at this point now it's bad. But at that point, I feel like some shit that probably could have gotten worked out. You know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, man, it's, it's sad to me. Like I said, like we, we were actually in the process of getting ready to interview Vaughn. Like we were actually setting up the interview and everything. So it, it was just like, yo, like a, a person to lose his life that young with kids over some bullshit. I don't know, man. It, it definitely, I, I was depressed for a while over the, hearing that shit. For sure. You know, and I didn't, I didn't even know him. So I can't even imagine what you were going through. Um, well, that situation happened to you with the shooting. You recovered from it. Oh. You know, you're okay. And then last year in 2021, you got caught in another shooting. Mm -hmm. Once again, a situation that really wasn't your fault or, <laughs> you know, some shit that really you were even mm -hmm. responsible for. So, so. Take me through that whole situation. I don't know. Like, I put myself in that situation right there. Like, I put myself in that situation because for once, the person who was pulling up to sell me some weed ain't never supposed to pull it up to my crib because I never let that nigga pull up to my crib or no shit like that. Like, if I seen him, I'd meet him outside somewhere. I was so thirsty and just trying to go outside to get the weed. It was nine in the morning. I wanted to smoke. So shit, like that's what happened. Like, I was buying a weed. I was getting a weed. I was nine in the morning. I hop, I hop, I hop in the car. I bang, I tell him, like, pull in my garage. Drop me right off. You hear me? I tell him, like, pull in my garage, drop me right off. They um pull in the garage, shit, dropping me off, finna drop me back off as I'm getting the weed. Shit. As we like on like the fifth entrance, because it's like five floors in the um, garage. As we like on the fifth entrance, a nigga run up out the cut and and knock my window out by shooting. But when he knocked my window out by shooting, shit, shots get the fire. Now that shots going back and forth. So shit, another nigga come run from out the cut, shoot again. Another nigga come run from out the cut, shoot again. It was like three shooters. So I'm, I'm, I'm like, damn, I'm fucked that. I hop up out the car. I'm like, fuck that. I'm not finna, because every time we trying to get out, it's people steady running up. We, fuck that. I'm trying to get out. I get out the car. Now I hop out that bitch. But I feel blood coming down my face. So I'm thinking I'm hitting the, hitting the face. I, I put my, um, take my jewelry off my neck, because I had jewelry on at the time. Take my two chains off my neck. I put them in my pocket. Put them in my coat pocket. So now I'm running with my, my shirt over my face. I'm running. I ain't knowing I got grazed in the eye or in the mouth. So I'm running downstairs. Some people running up to me like, he stole our car. Yeah, it was him. It was him with a phone now. Like, yeah, it was him. It's Lil Reese. It was him. He stole our car. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, I ain't got to steal no car. It's all goof ass on. Police come from out the blind side, like on the side where it's bleeding, where I can't see. Police come and tackle me. Knock me down. Knock my chains all out my, 
out my pocket, knock my phones and shit, knock everything out my pocket and shit. So now it's people outside, it's all type of people outside, people with their phone, people picking up my jewelry, all type of shit, like stealing, all type of shit. Like, yeah, he stole our car, ooh, but it was, a, it was a misunderstanding, that whole thing, fuck that shit. Okay, so the dudes that, that were selling weed to you pulled up in a stolen car, and I guess the guy who owned the car found the car through a GPS or something? I guess, I don't know what the fuck he did, but when he found the car, he called the police. He had the police down there as well. Huh. Okay, so you got you got grazed in the eye with with, with a bullet. Yeah. Um, I I guess another guy got shot in the knee, and there was a third guy that was actually in critical condition. He no, he wasn't ever critical so, condition. He got shot in the head, and he got shot in the arm, and he got shot somewhere else. But he wasn't ever in critical condition because she. He was walking with me right downstairs. As we both came out, he was walking downstairs okay. too. And I didn't even know he was hitting the head and the arm and all type of other places and shit. I didn't know he was hit. Right. Because I guess uh, one of the cars sped off and then crashed. Um, and then the, when the police came, I guess they slammed your door, your face against the concrete and kind of fucked you up even further. Yeah. Police fucked me up. Right um, here Right. I mean, there's actually a rumor that you were blind at that point. They were saying all type of stupid shit. Well, here you are within about, what, it was like a year and a half? You got shot twice? Yeah. Both times, both times in Chicago. And, you know, like, one of our, unfortunately, one of our more popular videos is Boosie talking about how most rappers get killed in their own city. And, you know, Boosie talked about how he moved out of Baton Rouge because he just couldn't take the hate. You know, most rappers die in their own city, man. It's a fact. And, um, you know, you have haters who who was in school with you and, and they mad because they was, on, they was in, that, in that third grade class with you, but they don't have the same hustle as you. You know, they hate you for no reason. They hate you for, they hate you for your success. If you was a local rapper and you, and you didn't have much, they would love you. You know, and these people, you develop hatred in your own city. You know, if you go to you go to Canada, you go to New York, you from Louisiana, you don't have hate, you don't have people want to hurt you because they don't know you. You know, they don't know you, and um, that's why I decided to move to Atlanta. You know, if, if I'm dealing with music, this is a place I need to be. I mean, here you are, two different times you get shot in your hometown. Were you thinking about moving away at any point? Because I mean, for example, look at Chief Keith. As soon as Keith got big. He moves to Calabasas and never even came back to Chicago. And he's been doing fine ever since. As big of a figure as he is. You chose to stay. I mean, did you think about moving at any point during those two shootings? Yeah, I thought yeah, I thought about moving. But then I had to um come back and help my family and stuff. Okay. So it wasn't like I mean, are you I still thinking about back. moving? Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking about moving right now, I'm trying to move to Cali. I mean, has Chief Keith actually come back to Chicago at some point? Yeah, yeah. Does he, he ever come back, back or is he always out of the city? He came back, but he don't he don't gotta he come back. back. He don't be coming back. He don't have to he don't have to come back. Right. But if he comes back, he's probably just real low key with his family and friends and he's out. You don't see him coming back, hanging out, Instagramming, doing shows, nothing else like that. Yeah, but it's it's rare. Oh, he don't why do you come think that back, is? I don't know. He don't got to come back. Shit, he, shit, he don't got to come back here. Huh? I feel like, and I know he probably felt like the same way. Like, he ain't got to come back. Yeah, I mean, I think it's smart. Because if you think about, he has never gotten into any situations being out in Cali. None. None. And he, and he, imagine how big a Chief Keef show would be in Chicago right now. You know that. You know it. I mean, he, he can fill a stadium right now. Yeah. Right. I mean, do, do you actually do shows in Chicago? No. Why is that? I mean, cause we don't be we don't be doing shows out here. That's just like something we just don't do. If they if they book us, because like, of the I mean, if they book us, the show might even get shut down if they even book us. So you'll never know. Shut down by police? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They ain't gonna let no show go on. 
I mean, does that bother you being from Chicago, having most of your real hardcore fans out there knowing that if you ever did a show in Chicago, it would be the craziest show you ever did, and yet you can't do a show in Chicago? Yeah. That's how it is. Shit. Yeah. It been like that. Yeah, when we first did our first show, it was in like 2012. So I, ever since after that, we ain't did no more shows out here. Okay. Were those shows that end up getting shut down or did shit break out? No, uh, let me see. Hold on, I'm trying to think. Did, no, hell no, that show was cracking. Um, what 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 the fuck that shit was at? Um, what the fuck? What the fuck? The lick or some shit, whatever they used to call it, the lick. I think that's what it was. Back then, it was a little bullshit ass club we used to do called the lick. We ain't did no shows like that since the lick. You heard me? Yeah, that's too bad, man. That's too bad. Cause like I said, imagine how lit a Lil Reese concert would be right now in yeah. Chicago. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it'll sell. Cause everybody gonna want to come. Right. Well, I mean, this same year, we, we had more tragedy again. Uh, Lil Dirk's brother, D-Thing, ended up getting killed. Um, I remember I had talked to D-Thing a while back. I remember just how good of a dude he was, just how straightforward and, and you know, how he had a good energy, man. So I remember I was bothered by it. Uh, E-Day, who I interviewed as well, he got killed. And you actually spoke about that. You said, uh, R.I.P. E-Day. Uh, you said, you grew up with me and all that shit you thought I had against you, I didn't. I won't see none of my dudes like that. Because when I when I got grazed, you was checking on me low-key worried. You know, free C-Day. Yeah. Um, seeing seeing more people, you know, and you knew D-Thing as well? Yeah, I knew D-Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. D-Thing D -Thing was one of the first person who was right there when me and Dirk first started rapping. Like it. Detail was there from the start. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I met him as well when I was doing interviews with uh mm -hmm. with Dirk back then. Yeah. Um you know, seeing seeing those two dudes killed once again in Chicago, how did that affect you? I mean it was tough. It lost be tough. It was tough. Yeah. This shit was different. Well, just recently, NBA Youngboy put out a song uh, dissing O Black. And you actually reacted to it. What did you think about that? Exactly what I said. I forgot what I said, but I, 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 that's exactly what I was thinking. You didn't... That ain't no demon time. He just rapping like the rest of these rappers all rap. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, considering just all the shit that's happened between NBA Youngboy and the people affiliated with him and, you know, you, Dirk, you know, King Von and everything else like that, the fact that Youngboy isn't even really affiliated with Chicago, y'all, this is really just an absolute stranger to y'all. When you see this type of bullshit unfolding, how do you feel about it? See, it is what it is. If young boy ever reached out to you and said, listen, I want me and you to just help squash all this shit. Like, fuck all the bullshit that's happened. Let's just try to move past it. Everyone has careers. Everyone's got kids. Let's just try to move past it so we don't keep repeating the cycle over and over again. Would you do it? Yeah, I'd do it. There you have it. <laughs> there you have it. So when young boy sees this, man, give Reese a call. And let's just try to work this shit out. Because I don't think anyone's really happy at the results of what's been happening. You know what I'm saying? Like, like selling a few more records ain't worth all these people getting lost. So let's see what happens. Um, recently, uh, G Herbo's people uh, went on the internet and said that... Uh, that he left them broke and, and everything else like that. You said, uh, if Herb was for my block, we would have uh, beat his ass for bringing black shit to the internet. I guess I guess you're talking about the dudes who are talking shit. Yeah, I was just talking shit though, but they ain't, they ain't, they ain't, they ain't um, I don't, I don't like that type of shit. Like, if you got a problem, you ain't got to bring it to the internet. That's just how I look at things. 
I don't like that type of shit. If you got a problem with me, call my phone, bro. Or find a way to call my phone. Or find a way to get up with me. Don't bring it to the internet. You ain't got to run to the internet. Well, I, I think on top of that also is that, I mean, as an adult, you're not responsible for any other adults unless they're your kids. You know what I'm saying? The fact that you blew up and these dudes didn't, that doesn't mean you got to keep supporting them like they're, they're, they're your kids. <laughs> But I feel like people sometimes feel that way. Like, oh yeah, he blew up and he ain't fucking with us no more. Like, what what have you been doing this whole time? Have you been people grinding be, the same be, way that G Herbo's been grinding? People be still stuck in the past. They mindset. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because you're not gonna be able to bring everyone with you. You know, you could bring one or two people with you, but you're not gonna bring your whole neighborhood with you. So that's the whole, like, you know, the boosie hypnotized with hatred shit. Motherfuckers look at you and, and remember how they used to hang out with you. And now you're there and they're still here. You know? I mean, have you had a lot of your old friends pull that bullshit too? <laughs> that shit happened there, with, man. That's what go on. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. Yeah, man. But at the end of the day, I mean, if you're not putting in that work, if you're not really out there hustling, you know, the shit ain't just gonna come to you. And you know, look, I mean, when you look at, when you look at Lil Reese, like, you're not just still holding on to the shit that you did from 2012. Like you've been putting out projects every year. For sure. You, you see what I'm saying? Like you've been sure. rapping, like you, you've you been, not only have you been rapping, but you've been out there, you know, hooking up with people. Like, you know, like the features that you've gotten have always been real impressive. Like, I mean, from the Drake to the Young Dolphs to Kevin Gates. I mean, really just a lot of people, man. You know? Um, you know, and I, I just feel like in terms of your career, you've really gone through a lot more shit than, than really anybody else, man. From getting shot in the neck to getting grazed to to all the beef that that you've gotten thrown into, some of which is you know you end up inheriting it from just people that are around you you know from your neighborhood to your affiliations and everything else like that um you know the position that you're in right now it, it wasn't a cakewalk like you had to earn it and you had to fight for it mm -hmm. you know and um uh, you know like like you and i have been talking about doing this for a while uh I remember one point you said it was, it was gonna take a million dollars to do a vlad mm -hmm. tv interview yeah i was just <laughs> you know i was, what I'm just, I was just talking shit at the time Hey, you know, right. ain't nobody, talk some shit back. Ain't nobody know. <laughs> hey, no. You know what I mean? mean? I, I talk, I talk my shit what, back. What, we went what, back and forth a little bit. What, what you say? What you say on that shit? What you say when I said it? I, I, th I think I said ain't no one paying a million dollars for a little Reese interview. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You was like, fuck that. You know, and, and although, and you know, and we, and we worked something out for this interview, but it wasn't a million dollars. For uh, people ask, it's not a million dollars, <laughs> but we work something out. Hey, hey, man, you you know, like, but, but little Reese, man, you was yeah, like, fuck yeah, that. Little Reese, man, like, I, I've that. been a fan for a long time, man. The fuck yeah. that, nah, nah, I'm not a fan of a million. I'll, I'll, I'll break you off some, but it ain't gonna be a million. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, man, little Reese, man, I, I've been a fan. Like you can mm. tell by the way when I'm listening out these songs, like us, traffic. Yeah, how long you been uh, around? Distance. How long you been like, around? Vlad TV started in 2008. 2008. So you've been around since 2008? Yeah. So you've been looking on... Well, I mean, I was around as a mix... I, yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, I started as a DJ in 2002, but Vlad TV started so in 2008. So you've been on the scene since so, 2002. Yeah, man, you've been on the hip-hop scene since 2002? Yes. 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 So you yeah, really... 20 years. Right, yeah. Right. So that's why it's so deep with you, because you've been on the scene for 20 years. So you've seen a lot of... um. Generations, I could say that. I could say you saying about two, three, two type of two type of three or two, two to three, four different generations. Right, right, and you know, and, and I see the patterns and shit. I see like you know a lot of dudes I interviewed, like like Mo three or you know FBG Duck and so forth. I've told them to move out of their neighborhoods as we're doing our interviews. I'm like, yo, this is gonna like what you're doing right now. It's gonna end badly. You know what I'm saying? Like like these songs you're putting out and the people you're beefing with and how you're still staying in the same city, it's going to end badly for you. And they would always give me an excuse why why they're good and it's not going to happen and so forth. And then unfortunately you get, you know, the tragedy of it all. And, you know, um, 
it's sad to me. It, it's sad, but you know, congratulations on everything you pulled off, man. You you've really shown, you know, your resilience, and you know, I think a lot of people that don't really have the heart that you have, they would have probably left all this shit alone a long time ago. They would have been like, this hip hop shit's too much. I'm gonna go find a regular nine to five job. And I'm gonna leave this shit alone because it's not worth all the violence and all the threats and all the, the stress and, and everything else like that, man. But the fact that you've stayed in this game now for 10 years and you've had the success, you've had the big songs, you've had the big features and you're still here, man, is it really shows about what type of man you are. And sure. uh, you know, I think people just gotta respect that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. So, man, congrats! You know, congratulations. Yeah, look, you know, man. I wish you all the best, man. And hey, you know, wish your family all look, the best. Look, man, tell her yes, man. I got that. Get back, game three on the way. Got that. I got all type okay. of. I got some any new big, shit. Any big features talking. on that? Yeah, yeah, I got, I got Vaughn. Look, I got Get Back Game Three on the way, man. I got Vaughn on that bitch. I got Herb on that bitch. Who else I'm gonna throw on that bitch? I, I might throw, I might throw Kevin Gates on that bitch. Uh, I'm gonna throw uh, Roddy Rebel on that bitch. Uh, shit, whoever else I wanna put on that bitch, whoever else I feel like putting on that bitch is on the way. That's what it is, man. Like I said from the beginning, Reese, you're a, you're a Chicago legend, man. I think you really changed hip hop. I, I think that that really the music y'all put out there made made a big difference. And, I mean, and before I let you go, how do you feel? You know, like the Chicago drill shit that you started has now become a worldwide phenomenon. You know, you got you, you got Brooklyn drill with dudes like Pop Smoke and Five Year Foreign. You got Brixton drill in the UK with groups like Six Seven. You know, Jacksonville has their own version of, of basically drill. You know, the shit that y'all started, you know, in your, in your bedrooms in Chicago has now become a worldwide phenomenon. How does that make you feel? I mean, see, it really, it, it really, it, it really don't show a lot. It show a lot though, like, that shit, that shit show a whole lot, I ain't gonna lie, like, like, is that so people really be tuned in, they really be, Watch, that's what go on in the world. Yeah. That's what type of shit they go on. Hip hop, New, New York drill, come on. That shit, that's what's going on in New York. Yep. Yep. That's what it is, man. Lil Reese, man, I appreciate you coming in. And, uh, you know, let's have you back on soon and have you catch up again, man. But congrats on everything, man. Wish you all the best. For sure, you already know.